The demand for AI data centers just seems to climb more as we look into the future. And one of the ideas being brought forward is launching a data center in space. As a matter of fact, as of November 2025, we are one small step into making an orbital data center possible called StarCloud-1. This small refrigerator that SpaceX just dropped off in space contains an NVIDIA H100 graphics card. And what's crazier is that this is just the beginning. They're targeting to expand their facility to two and a half mile by two and a half miles. But I mean, this has to be a publicity stunt, right? Are we actually going to have this giant village in space? What about the cost to launch this in orbit? And what about cooling without air or water? It just seems like the more you think about it, the more unrealistic the vision seems. So let's find out why everyone seems to be talking about this strange futuristic idea. Welcome to Caleb Bright's Code, where every second counts. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room, which is energy to power these graphics cards in space. I mean, it's hard enough to power these on Earth. How are we going to power these in space? Well, space actually has the advantage of a stable energy source, which is the sun. And as long as we can remain synchronous in our path, to the sun to maximize the exposure, we can reliably use solar panels in space to power these graphics cards. So let's look at the cost of solar panels and see what we're dealing with. Here on Earth, solar panels for residential usage are actually pretty cheap. They're lower than a dollar per watt without factoring in insulation cost. And if you use Chinese solar panels, you will get much cheaper ones too. But if we want to use solar panels in space, it's going to cost you a little bit more than that. The most recent release from StarPath was able to achieve $11.21 per watt for their flight-ready space solar panel. And this is considered extremely cheap compared to market price. So using the $11.21 per watt as a base price, let's now look at the power consumption from the graphics cards and calculate the total cost of energy. Let's say we want to launch this HEX H100 unit that has eight H100 GPUs in a single topology right into space. The power consumption for this HEX unit is 5,600 watts or 5.6 kilowatts according to NVIDIA spec. But realistically, they're going to be more like 10,000 watts or 10 kilowatts if you factor in other things like CPUs, RAM, solid state drives, and other electronics. So now that we know the power consumption needs, which is 10,000 watts for the HEX unit, if we multiply it to the $11.21 per watt for a space solar panel, we arrive at the total cost of $112,100. In other words, this HEX unit that retails for about a quarter million dollars the solar panel that's needed to power it in space is going to cost around $112,100. But this cost only accounts for the build cost. We still haven't considered the cost to launch it into orbit. Let's say we want to use the SpaceX Falcon 9 as our provider. How much will it cost to launch this into orbit at the current pricing? In order to figure out the cost to launch this thing, we need to actually look at the weight of both the HEX unit and the solar panel. So how heavy is our payload? Let's figure out the weight of the solar panels first. Most manufacturers tend to converge around 30 watt per kilogram. So since we need 10,000 watts to power our compute, our total projected weight for the solar panel is around 333 kilograms. And the Falcon 9 costs around $2,750 per kilogram, which means the solar panel alone will cost around $915,000 to launch. Now we have to factor in the cost of the HEX unit as well, which is technically 24 kilograms, but we need to also add in the weights of chassis, cold shields, and other spacey stuff that's honestly beyond my comprehension. So let's throw in a conservative amount at 100 kilograms additional weight. So altogether, 124 kilograms for our entire compute module. And the cost to launch our compute module alone is $341,000. And now the total cost to launch the solar panel and the compute module is $1.3 million. And you might be looking at this $1.3 million price tag, and your first question might be this. How does this $1.3 million compare to the cost of energy here on Earth? I mean, on Earth, we have things like nuclear, gas, coal, wind, and more. It's got to be cheaper to run this on Earth, right? Let's do the math and find out. If we assume that after the HEX unit is safely in orbit, 
and they're going to be running at nearly 100% of the time in orbit for five years until they're decommissioned, the total energy that will be used will be 10,000 watts times 24 hours times 335 days times five years, so altogether 438 megawatt hours. And earlier, our rough cost estimate to build and launch the HDX unit was around $1.3 million. So if we divide the summation of cost, which is $1.3 million, by the summation of energy produced over time, which is 438 megawatt hours, this means the cost of electricity per megawatt is $2,968. And this very metric is called levelized cost of electricity or LCOE. Now we can actually compare this $2,968 to other figures from different energy sources on earth. And they're at least 10 times more expensive in comparison as of now. So yeah, not very great. So then why on earth is everyone talking about space solar panels and AI in space if it makes way more sense to train them on earth? Well, as you can see, the biggest bottleneck here is the launch cost. In other words, if the launch cost actually gets cheaper and cheaper, say by a factor of 10, then the cost actually starts to make sense. But we forgot one element, cooling. One of the biggest selling points that people like to use when it comes to orbital data center is when it comes to cooling, because we can dissipate heat through radiation instead. But does radiation in space really make cooling that much more efficient? Let's find out. Here on Earth, we use millions of gallons of water every day dedicated to cooling these graphics cards in AI data centers. For example, a mid-sized data center consumes up to 110 million gallons of water per year, and hyperscalers like Stargate from OpenAI, Colossus from XAI, and Google likely uses more than 2 billion gallons of water per year. That is a lot of water. Thankfully, in space, we can just radiate heat away from the graphics card, but cooling isn't totally free in space either. And graphics cards require consistent cooling or else they get damaged. Unlike on Earth, where we use reliable source of water, airflow, and evaporation to transfer heat to a different source, in space, thermal radiation is the only way we know how and it's not the most efficient way to transfer heat. So in order to dissipate heat, that's generated from this HEX unit will likely need a radiator that is a square footage of a medium to a large house. And the math that goes behind calculating the size of the radiator needed in space is a little bit complicated, but I highly recommend checking out the theory behind if you're interested in how heat dissipation works. But as you can see, the radiator adds more weight to the already expensive payload, and now everything points back once again to the launch cost. In order to make all of this make sense economically, the launch cost needs to come down by a factor of 10 or more. And beyond just economics, we also have mother nature to deal with, things like maintaining data center in orbit, damage and repair from thermocycling, dealing with meteoroid or micrometeoroids, damage and repair when chips malfunction, and other space problems like that. But in any case, StarCloud is getting a head start in that journey as they try to install their 4 kilometers by 4 kilometers in orbital data center that consumes up to 5 gigawatts of power. And as of now, the typical price range is around $1,500 to $50,000 per kilogram depending on which company you choose to launch your stuff. And even though the SpaceX Falcon 9 has a price tag of $2,750 per kilogram, once Elon can actually get this number down, we could be looking at AI in data centers in space actually start to make sense. But sooner or later, we could really be seeing a small town sized orbital data centers in space running AI models in the future.